The Alabama Farmers Federation and the Alabama Farmers Cooperative proudly present Simply Southern with your hosts, Jim Allen and Mary Johnson. Good morning and welcome to Simply Southern. I'm Jim Allen. And I'm Mary Johnson. Thanks for joining us for the unique stories of life in the South. On today's show, we'll take a ride through Rock Bridge Canyon Equestrian Park in Hodges, Alabama. If you don't have the qualities that a Mercedes or a Hyundai plan is looking for, uh, then you have, to, you have to look at what you do have. And what Hodges had going for them was beautiful scenery. We'll also step back in history to a time of churning butter and mules pulling plows at Coleman County's Pine Heart Living History Farm. We feel like it's really good for the children to have some idea of where their food comes from, how farmers worked, and we focus here on how farmers worked before they had tractors and electricity. And finally, Sidney Phelps with Bonnie Plants will help scout out the best place to plant your backyard vegetable garden. Well, we'll start with a visit to a Greene County shrimp farm when we return in just a moment. There's no such thing as downtime when you own a farm. This is your land. You tend it and try to get the most from it, no matter the weather or time of day. It's been that way for generations. And for generations, your local quality co-op store has been there for you. With a full range of agriculture supplies and services, from feed to fertilizer, seed to grain storage, and the right hardware for any application, you'll always find what you need. Plus friendly, knowledgeable advice at your local quality co-op store. There's one near you. It's been said, without hard work, nothing grows but weeds. This is certainly true in agriculture. At the Alabama Farmers Federation, we know success is not born of fancy words, grand ideas, or good intentions. It's a result of wise planning, bold leadership, dedicated work, and blessings from above. We believe a plant should be more than a plant. This one is. It's all you need for your garden to succeed. Because it's a Bonnie plant. It represents hundreds of varieties of Bonnie's quality veggies and herbs. But more, it's from generations of Bonnie people who are passionate about sharing their love of gardening with you. Look for this little Bonnie plant and a whole family of plants like it in your garden center. Bonnie plants, so you'll know how to grow. Carl and Jan were camping with their family. Hey, sweetie, do you mind if I get your wallet? I'm going to run down and get some hot dogs for dinner. You know we're going to catch dinner, right? Yes, yes I do. Okay. Jan lost his wallet at the store. There was no ID in it, but the guy who found it found my business card and called me. I liked saving them money, but I loved helping them save their vacation. It was a good call. For service and savings, call Alpha. Tartar sauce, hon? Farming has always been important in Alabama's Black Belt counties. Cotton was king for years, but now many West Alabama farms have shifted to aquaculture. And it's not just catfish they're raising in those farm ponds. Some farmers are also raising shrimp. Since 1999, Dickie Odom has been on a mission in Bologi in Greene County. A mission to raise shrimp more than 100 miles away from the Alabama Gulf Coast. But his shrimp aren't the same kind that you'll buy at Orange Beach or Gulf Shores. The shrimp we're growing is a Pacific white shrimp. Probably the most cultured shrimp in the world. These shrimp like living in ponds and they get pretty big. The water in these ponds has salt water in it thanks to two ancient deep saltwater aquifers left behind from long ago when the Gulf of Mexico used to reach farther north in Alabama. In the greenhouse before we leave going down we make seawater because the salinity that on our farm is about five parts per thousand. The salinity in the sea down there and the ocean down there, their particular salinity down at Alamar is 34 parts per thousand. So we make seawater in our greenhouse. And then we head down south, we head with our trailer. When we get down there, they load us with their water and put their animals, their PLs in there, and we bring them back home and put them in our greenhouse. But to get the shrimp to rural Alabama, Dickey takes a road trip to the Florida Keys. The reason for the greenhouse stay is so we can train them to like our low salinity. Uh, they just can't go from, from 34 to our five. So they have to stay in our greenhouse for a few days. During the drive from the Florida Keys to Greene County, 
The four to five million baby shrimp called post larva are kept cool by liquid oxygen and a thousand gallons of water. That liquid oxygen serves two purposes, to keep them at 65 degrees and it also keeps the post larva from wanting to eat each other. They're pretty cannibalistic. They, they like each other about as good as I like them. When they get to the greenhouse, they are put in 24,000 gallons of local salt water. Shrimp go through several metamorphoses before they look like the animal that we recognize today. So the last stage, or the post larvae stage, is when he looks like the animal we, we know. All right. From the day he t gets to be a post larvae, we start counting it. Day one, day two, day three. That means PL1, PL2, PL3. So we want about a PL15. In other words, he's been in that shrimp body for 15 days. He's got pretty good development on his gills, so he can handle our low salinity. So then, we got to train him to like it. So we put him in the greenhouse, we introduce our pond water into the greenhouse until we get the salinity matched. And that takes several days, maybe a week or 10 days sometimes. Once we do that, then we can stop those animals out in our pond. In the greenhouse, they pump air in and churn the water to keep the growing shrimp from eating each other here as well. And it takes about half a year to get them grown. How, how long are they in your pond once they leave the greenhouse? Five pond? months. Five months. From the time we get them as, as post larvae, uh, well, from that size to that size, five months. Then comes the work of harvesting the adult shrimp for selling. Well, we drain the ponds and uh, we assist them to go through that pipe. They really don't want to go through that pipe, but we catch them on the backside and then uh, we pick them up with a boom truck, get weights on them, and we put them in, in totes, in just great big insulated coolers. And uh, that's one of, the, one of the, the best points about what we do because we harvest alive. Minutes after being pulled from the water, the shrimp are put under layers of ice to keep them fresh for customers who come from across West Alabama and East Mississippi. Yeah, yeah, we, we've got more customers than we've got shrimp. The production thing here has been fun, and it's, and you got to sell to try to make a living. But the friends we made doing this, we got people all over the state. They come from every direction. Got people come up from the coast here and buy some shrimp sometimes. For more information on how to buy some West Alabama raised shrimp, drop by Dickie Odom's farm in Bologi. Odom's shrimp are a hot commodity. When he hosts his farm sales, cars back up down the county road in Bologi. To get your shrimp, you'll have to drop by his Green County Farm. Up next, we'll take a trip back in time with a visit to the Pine Heart Living History Farm. And later see the scenic views offered on riding, hiking, and camping trails at Rock Bridge Equestrian Park in Franklin County. The blessing of Alabama agriculture is more than three meals a day. It means independence from foreign nations freedom to pursue other jobs and activities, conservation of natural resources, and preservation of family values. For 93 years, the Alabama Farmers Federation has brought together the men and women whose work fills our plates and fuels the American dream. We believe a plant should be more than a plant. This one is. It's all you need for your garden to succeed because it's a Bonnie plant. It represents hundreds of varieties of Bonnie's quality veggies and herbs. But more, it's from generations of Bonnie people who are passionate about sharing their love of gardening with you. Look for this little Bonnie plant and a whole family of plants like it in your garden center. Bonnie plants, so you'll know how to grow. I got a call from Ashley, one of my customers, because... It looks like there's been some sort of explosion. There is soot everywhere, all over this house. And she finds something very strange. <laughs> Someone's been here. Call 911. I'll be right there. I came home. Okay. It turns out someone tried to break into her house and they got stuck in the chimney. Ashley was covered for the damage to the chimney and the cleanup. For service and savings, call Alpha. <laughs> What one thing can you say about your local quality co-op store? You can trust us. You get what you need for your farm, for your lawn and garden, and the safest products for your pets. We're locally owned and operated, and you can trust that we care about our community and the people in it. So if you're a raised bed gardener, a rose gardener, or if you farm hundreds of acres, the quality co-op store has exactly what you need to get the job done. All this plus friendly, knowledgeable advice. Your quality co-op store. There's one near you. 
Thanks to new technology, farms in Alabama have changed a lot since the turn of the 20th century. That is, unless you're visiting the Pine Heart Living History Farm in Coleman County. While it may be 2015 on the calendar, the Living History Farm preserves farm life as it was in the 1920s and 30s. Samantha Carpenter tells us more. If you want a good example of hard work and dedication, look no further than the Pine Heart Living History Farm in Coleman County. Farm goes back in my family to my great-grandfather who came over from Germany. He farmed in this area. That was in the late 1870s, a long time before tractors, electricity, or even running water. And then my grandfather Otto farmed in this area. And then my father Carl built the white barn and white house here that we use for the Living History Farm. Also on that property, Bill Pinehart's father started planting row crops and raising hogs and dairy cattle. He became a leader in soil conservation in Alabama and the dairy industry, jobs he loved until his death. When he died in 1991, the four children, my two sisters and my brother and I, decided to try to keep the farm together as a living history farm. That's when they formed the Pinehart Living History Farm. And started having school children, elementary children out in 1992 and every year since then we've focused on third graders coming out. The mission? To carry on the family business and also educate the next generation about how Alabamians used to make ends meet by farming. They teach kids their agricultural roots and heritage. We feel like it's really good for the children to have some idea of where their food comes from, how farmers worked, and we focus here on how farmers worked before they had tractors and electricity. So it's really a historical time that we feel like is really important for the children to have some idea about. When students arrive, they are split into five groups and each group rotates to five different areas of the farm. We start here where we're going to start with the horse station where we talk about horses, mules, and oxen and how those were used by the farmer prior to tractors. Then they go to the kitchen area where they see how the farmer's wife worked in the kitchen with a wood burning stove before electricity was there. They go to the woods where they're learning about axes, crosscut saws, how log cabins were built, how houses were built before the time of uh, chainsaws and electricity. And then they go to the field to see where the crops were raised. They get to pick corn, pick sweet potatoes, uh, the whole gamut of field crops. And this isn't just a regular field trip. Students actually get to do some farm work and learn important lessons. We try to do as many hands-on things as we can, let the children themselves split logs, let them ride in the uh, mule wagon, and we hope by having those hands-on tactile things that they can do, they will actually remember some of the facts that we try to get across to them, rather than just stand up and talk to them. If you want to learn more, the 40-acre farm is open one day a year to the public, usually in October. You can visit their Pineheart Living History Farms website at pineheartfarm.com to learn more. In Coleman County, I'm Samantha Carpenter for Simply Southern. The farm hosts an annual farm day, usually in October, when it opens to the public. For more information, visit pineheartfarm.com. Coming up next, see how the small community of Hodges, Alabama has worked together to create a beautiful getaway at Rockbridge Equestrian Park. We believe a plant should be more than a plant. This one is. It's all you need for your garden to succeed. Because it's a Bonnie plant. It represents hundreds of varieties of Bonnie's quality veggies and herbs. But more, it's from generations of Bonnie people who are passionate about sharing their love of gardening with you. Look for this little Bonnie plant and a whole family of plants like it in your garden center. Bonnie plants, so you'll know how to grow. Taking care of your children is the most important thing in life. My husband had taken out a life insurance policy. I knew that my children were going to be provided for. My sister and I both were able to go to college with the life insurance that my father had purchased from Alpha. And now I feel the need to protect my family the same way that my father protected us. Joseph's got a policy with Piper now. That's five generations, all with the same agent. <laughs> and Alpha's the only place we want to be. For service and savings, call Alpha. There's nothing quite like sitting down to a home-cooked meal with fresh vegetables from the garden. With Bonnie Plants from your local quality co-op store, you can enjoy the freshest vegetables right from your own backyard. 
And no matter if you're a raised bed gardener, a rose gardener, or if you farm hundreds of acres, your quality co-op store has exactly what you need to get the most out of your plants. You'll always find what you need, plus friendly, knowledgeable advice at your local quality co-op store. There's one near you. It's been said, without hard work, nothing grows but weeds. This is certainly true in agriculture. At the Alabama Farmers Federation, we know success is not born of fancy words, grand ideas, or good intentions. It's a result of wise planning, bold leadership, dedicated work, and blessings from above. Nestled in northwest Alabama lies a small community of Hodges with a population less than 300. But those folks are lucky because they have a hidden jewel right in their backyards. Let's hear more about the Rock Bridge Canyon Equestrian Park from Kevin Worthington. If you don't have the qualities that a Mercedes or a Hyundai plan is looking for, uh, then you have, to, you have to look at what you do have. And what Hodges had going for them was beautiful scenery. Uh, we took that and we suggested that, hey, we have a uh, possibility here for an equestrian trail. Many of the people who live near the town of Hodges have enjoyed family outings over the years in the 80-acre canyon that features waterfalls, caves, and interesting rock formations, including a natural bridge that's a hundred feet high. My mother would bring my brother and I down here into the canyon, um, play in the waterfall, Mystic Falls, play in Spring House, I could sit behind me, and um, take a picnic, stay down here all day. And then when my children grew up, I would bring them down here. And now when my grandchildren come to visit me, we bring them here. And so it's a generational thing for us. We get to share it, and now we're getting to share it with everybody. Rock Bridge Canyon now features 27 miles of trails for horseback riding and two and a half miles of hiking trails. The park's director says he planned those trails based on what he liked and what he didn't like from nearly 50 years as a trail rider. We have many caverns and canyons. We have eight waterfalls, but all the trails are designed where you not only get to ride up and look at it, but you get to ride your horse through it. The trails will, will encircle the canyons. You can see the walls, you can see the overhangs. You are in under them. You can ride into our waterfalls. You can ride some of our waterfalls. You can ride behind them, or, or you can ride on top of them. The park just opened last fall, but already attendance has surprised even those with the highest expectations. And in spite of what they've heard or the pictures they've seen, visitors say they're also surprised at the natural beauty of the canyon. From Indiana to Washington State to New York to Florida, people from all over come. We have people from Germany, Australia, that come and walk and hike the canyon. Um, the pictures don't do it justice. I mean, we can post pictures all day long, but so you come and experience what the canyon is all about and the beautiful foliage and greenery we have here and the rock formations, and, and you, you, you have to come to experience it. You have to, uh, just to be a part of it. In addition to the trails through the canyon, Rock Bridge Equestrian Park has 34 campsites with bathhouses and more than 50 horse stalls, which are usually filled on weekends because of the sudden popularity of the park. Franklin says the influx of visitors has given hope to a town faced with an uncertain future. We've only been open not yet a full year and already there have been increase in business that's existed already in town because our campers use our businesses and fuel up their trucks. Uh, so with the town gets tax revenue off of that and there have been at least two new businesses that, that are working on putting in in town. Uh, one of them I'm happy is a uh, steakhouse restaurant and uh, the other one is a general dollar store that is putting in. Without the equestrian park, these businesses wouldn't have, we're too far off the interstate, too far out in the sticks. Now if you live in town, a dollar store may not seem like big economic news, but it's a big deal if you live in a place where the nearest place to shop is 20 miles away. The success of Rock Bridge Canyon Equestrian Park is at least the second time the people of Hodges have demonstrated to the world what can happen when people have a common goal 
and work together to achieve it. Years ago in 1943, when the War Department came to Hodges, Alabama and said, we need money. We need money, would you please buy some war bonds? The little town of Hodges raised $48,000 in 1943 for the war effort. Uh, that was the spirit of Hodges then, and that spirit of Hodges is alive today. For Simply Southern, I'm Kevin Worthington. While the equestrian trails are a big draw to the park, visitors can also enjoy hiking and camping in the picturesque wilderness. For more information, visit rockbridgecanyon.com. After the break, Sydney Phelps with Bonnie Plants will have tips on the best place to plant your backyard vegetable garden. This seems unbelievable, but I promise it's true. What's with the buzzer? Oh, that's a raven. That's a good omen. He knows we're coming back with dinner. Well, that bird had a bunch of friends. And when Scott got back to the camper... Well, that was a buzzer! What? Scott! Wait, what did you do? That's raining inside. His new camper was a total loss, but his alpha policy covered it. It's that bird. For service and savings, call Alpha. Making sure you're covered? Good call. There's no such thing as downtime when you own a farm. This is your land. You tend it and try to get the most from it, no matter the weather or time of day. It's been that way for generations. And for generations, your local quality co-op store has been there for you. With a full range of agriculture supplies and services, from feed to fertilizer, seed to grain storage, and the right hardware for any application, you'll always find what you need. Plus friendly, knowledgeable advice at your local quality co-op store. There's one near you. The blessing of Alabama agriculture is more than three meals a day. It means independence from foreign nations, freedom to pursue other jobs and activities, conservation of natural resources, and preservation of family values. For 93 years, the Alabama Farmers Federation has brought together the men and women whose work fills our plates and fuels the American dream. We believe a plant should be more than a plant. This one is. It's all you need for your garden to succeed. Because it's a Bonnie plant. It represents hundreds of varieties of Bonnie's quality veggies and herbs. But more, it's from generations of Bonnie people who are passionate about sharing their love of gardening with you. Look for this little Bonnie plant and a whole family of plants like it in your garden center. Bonnie plants, so you'll know how to grow. Hey, Sydney Phelps here with Bonnie Plants. Today we're going to talk about the best spot for you to find to place your new garden. Now whether you're a novice gardener and this is your first garden or you're a new homeowner and you're trying to find the perfect spot in your backyard to make that garden, today we're going to find out the best place to do that. Now behind me, if you're going to plant a raised bed or go in the ground, this would be an ideal location. You've got the morning sun coming in, so you're not going to have to worry about that in the afternoon as it starts setting in. You've got Plenty of room so you can go those indeterminate tall tomatoes that are going to be five, six feet tall. You've got the space to be able to spread out as much as you want. Now that's the thing to consider. Also you want to consider where your water source is coming from. You want to make sure that you can run your lines, whether it be through uh, hose irrigation or drip irrigation, or you may even set everything up on automatic timer. Those are the important details that you're really going to have to pay attention to before you start setting any groundwork for your garden. Now. Let's say that you don't have a whole lot of area to put in maybe a full-size raised bed. Four by four raised bed kits are probably the best things that you can get for your garden. They're, they're compact and it allows you to grow everything that your family will need in a short area and you get the most bang for your buck. Now four by four area, you may be saying that it may be a little bit too large for what I've got going on. However, you can do everything you need. Now if that's still too big, you can move to containers. Now containers, if you're in an apartment setting or a condo and you don't have a lot of area, that's going to be one of the most ideal locations that you can use. They're maneuverable, you can put them in different locations throughout your backyard or patio setting, and it's easy to water and maintain. Also, the thing that you need to take in mind when dealing with containers is space. You cannot grow those indeterminate tomatoes that are going to be extra large and growing five to six foot. You're going to have to be more compact, which is determinate tomato. Now keep in mind, the determinate tomato 
those only bear the majority of their fruit at one time. So this is what you're going to be doing for canning, slicing, putting up sauces. You're not going to have the tomatoes that bear fruit all throughout the season. It will bear fruit, but the predominant of the load is going to come on at one time. Now, coming into your peppers, your herbs, all those type things are great for containers. You want to try to go with cabbage and collards in more of a bed setting to utilize your space as best as you can. That being said, let's take a look around our options and see where we can put the best things and locate them. Now, most backyards have fenced in areas or neighborhoods especially. This is a perfect area for you to put in a raised bed or an in the ground garden. Make sure you do a soil test with an in the ground garden and make sure that you've got the right nutrients or apply those as needed. This area is perfect. You're gonna be mowing the grass anyway, so why not have an area for fresh vegetables right out the back door? Now, you can utilize the fence for a trellis and do beans or cucumbers, anything along those lines. But if you don't have this much space, let's take a look at a perfect area for containers. Now behind me, you see a perfect example of a very small patio. The thing about these patios, even though they're common in condos and apartments, is you can still garden there. You have to be very aware of what you're gonna plant. You want determinate tomatoes, you want low growing compact herbs and peppers. It's great because you can throw it right on the grill as you're cooking, but you want to really make sure you know what you've got going in. That being said, with your raised bed and other traditional gardening, you can find all that information out at bonnieplants.com. Go take a look, you'll find out the frost dates and the harvest dates. That makes sure you get the most out of your garden before it freezes. Well, with that being said, we'll see you next week. And remember, you can find out more about backyard vegetable gardening at bonnieplants.com. For more information on stories featured in today's Simply Southern episode, be sure to like our Simply Southern Facebook page. You can also find out more by visiting individual websites. Visit pineheartfarm.com for more about Coleman County's Living History Farm. For more details on Rockbridge Canyon in Franklin County, visit rockbridgecanyon.com and find the gardening tips and tricks at bonnieplants.com. And remember, Dickie Odom's Shrimp Farm does not actually have a website, so you'll have to visit his Bology Farm to find out details about his fall shrimp sale. Be sure to tune in at the same time next week for a historical journey to the Indian Mounds in Oakville, Alabama. And we'll take a tasty journey to Dothan for the National Peanut Festival. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Simply Southern. I'm Jim Allen. And I'm Mary Johnson. We hope to see you again next week. Simply Southern is a production of the Alabama Farmers Cooperative and the Alabama Farmers Federation.